I decided on my game of the year pretty much the moment it put it up. And then uh, I played Marvel Midnight Suns a few weeks after that. Which I was also like, oh man, if, if, if my actual game of the year hadn't came out, it would probably be Marvel Midnight Suns, which is also like a wonderful game that's uh, that does a lot of surprising things. And I think takes a very established genre and, and pushes the boundaries of it outwards, which what I love when games do that, when games uh, fold themselves into something that you haven't quite seen before. Uh, but unfortunately for Marvel Midnight Suns, my actual game of the year did come out a few weeks before, so uh, it wasn't a process so much as a retroactive check, vibe check, I guess, later on. I mean, I don't know what vibe check means because I'm 38. So my game of the year is Pentiment, which uh, is this wonderful ode to the history of Bavaria during the Protestant Reformation. And it's like, there's no real way to kind of summarize Pentiment in a way that makes it sound like exciting and sexy, but that's basically what it is. It's got this gorgeous, really distinct art style that's based around the kind of art that you would see in manuscripts and you know, painted onto frescoes uh, at the time. And they've really studied that art and figured out a way to make it convincingly lifelike and animatable, which is in and of itself incredible. Essentially, it is a game about history, uh, about um, how art informs us about people who are long past. It's, it's one of the most wonderful examples of that that's ever come out like it's uh, distinct from Assassin's Creed for example where Assassin's Creed tries to sort of um, with a very naturalistic kind of 3D art style put you in the middle of the past it sends you to Istanbul in the 1600s for example whereas Pentiment tries to tell you what life was like back then based on the art of the time. I think the approach taken by Pentiment is a bit of a hard sell. You can look at it and wonder why anyone who isn't a massive history nerd should care about it. But I think what video games have a wonderful habit of doing is kind of um, democratizing history just by virtue of being like a mainstream first party RPG that's available on Game Pass. And Josh Sawyer, the, the director of the game, has even himself said that this game probably wouldn't exist without Game Pass. He wouldn't even consider pitching it without the subscription model in place. So it's a, it's a really good uh, advocate for that. But I think the reason people should care, even if they're not especially into history, is that you might discover that you actually love learning about history because of this game, because it's so well researched and when you look into the things that it's riffing on or the things that it's referencing, you'll find that despite the fact that it's a bunch of fictional characters in a fictional town, most of it is like based on some pretty rock solid research. Um, you can tell the people who made it actually do love history themselves. Like a lot of people who like reading about history describe themselves as amateur historians and I would never be quite pretentious enough to do that. But I do think that like, if you want to be like Gen Z about it, there is like a history fandom. It's this great drama that has actually happened. So uh, everyone's invested in it because we all, we've all grown out of it. Every time I write something about Pentiment, I just finish it with, please, for the love of God, play Pentiment. Because I need to talk to everyone about it and I want everyone to love it as much as I do. Because I don't want to feel like a weirdo. It's brilliant, please play it. Stick with us because we're going to be showcasing all of our games of the year every day in the run up to Christmas, by which point we will have decided what the site's overall game of the year is. It should be Pentiment, but nobody listens to me. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs>